Hey everyone, my name's Rowan, and today I'm going to show you how you can create an Azure function app using PowerShell functions directly in Azure. So we're going to start with our resource group, and we're going to hit create, we'll search for function app. Now in here we need to give it a name, for runtime we need to select PowerShell, and we'll just change the region, and everything else can stay the same, so we're going to hit review and create, and we'll create that. And now that's created, we're going to just take a quick look at the resource group, and you see the other resources we need for a function app to work have been created for us. We go into the function app and we'll click functions on the left hand side and now we're going to hit create now you notice at the top develop and portal we're going to leave that because this is where we're creating our function and for this one we're going to select http trigger our function we're going to call this stuff and authorization level we're just going to turn it off now if you take a look at code and test on the left hand side now what you see is powershell script and actually kind of looks similar to the net functions base setup We've got our parameters, our request, and the information about the trigger that calls the function. We've got a little logging line here. We're going to try and get a name, which is what it's passing in here. We're going to try and get it from the request or from the body. Um, this is because it supports both get and post request by default. Then it's going to set the response body, um, change it if there's a name in there. And finally, we're going to push our response to our output binding. In this case, it's just HTTP output. Um, and it's going to set up the body here. So we've got the status code, OK, and the body itself. Over on the left-hand side, we've also got an integration section. Here you can go more in-depth with your triggers and your inputs and outputs. Also have monitor, which is for logging. The, also, the other important one is function keys. Function keys are used for authorization if you want to authorize at a function level. So there's one by default, and we could create a new one. But because we turned authorization off, we don't actually need any of these. So we go back over to code and test. Now, because our app is a PowerShell app, we're actually going to do something a little bit sort of PowerShell, you know, utilize the fact that this is PowerShell. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all of this and we're going to paste in body equals get time zone list available. We're going to select object property ID. So what this is going to do is it's going to get a list of all the time zones and it's going to select the ID from those rather than getting all of the information back. And it's going to set the response up in the same way and return that to us. So if we hit save there and if we go back to our function app overview, we can get the URL and a new tab. We can search slash API slash lister, and this has given us our list of time zones. So if we just copy one of these, we'll copy Alaskan Standard Time just for our clipboard for now. We're actually going to create another type of function demonstrating using the service bus queues. So to do this, go back to Azure. In our resource group, we'll hit create. We need a service bus. So we search for service bus and create. We give it a unique name. We'll set the pricing tier just to basic for now. We don't need any more than that. And we'll create that. And then inside the service bus, we're going to hit plus Q at the top. And we're going to call it time dash input. We'll leave everything else default for now. Let's also create another queue. We'll call it time dash output. And we'll create that. So back in our function app, we want to go to functions again. We're going to hit create. And for our trigger type this time, we're going to select Azure Service Bus Queue Trigger. Let's scroll down. We're going to call it time converter. Now, the reason we need to set up the service bus first, because by default, you won't have any service bus connections here. So what you want to do is hit new and we'll select which service bus we have. So in this case, we're using SB PowerShell test. And then it's going to use the default access key setup. And we'll just hit OK. There. And now we'll enter our queue name here. This is the input queue we set up. And we'll hit create. And you'll notice the default code this time is a lot less. Um, we've got our input. We've got a string. It's just uh, setting it here. And we're just, it's just outputting to the log here. There's nothing um, crazy going on. Where the magic happens here is in the function.json part. So this is setting up the trigger. So we've got service bus trigger. The direction is in, a queue name, and this is the connection string is set up to our service bus. So what we're going to do is paste below this block here. So we're setting up another binding. The type is service bus rather than service bus trigger. The direction is out, and this is the queue name we set up before. For the connection string, we can just copy this one, paste it in here, because it is a valid connection to our service bus. And now we've got that, we actually need to do something with it. So if we go back to our main PowerShell script, and we're going to replace this log this time with this. So we've got converted time. We're going to do some PowerShell time zone conversion using the current date time and the message passed in through the queue, which is going to be the ID it uses. That's specifically why we got the ID from our output before. And we're going to do a push to the binding, which we already set up in our function.json. And we're just going to send the converted time back. So let's save that. And if we go back over to our service bus, we can go down. First, we're going to look at the time output queue. And we're just going to check zero active messages here. So we'll go back. 
and we'll go to our time input and we can select service bus explorer on the left hand side now you can click on send messages at the top and we're going to paste in here alaskan standard time which we selected on our keyboard before and we're just going to hit send here and you notice q1 here but if we refresh it it was at this point i realized that my output queue is actually spelled wrong so let's go back and create that again properly because it's set up wrong when i refresh it, it actually went to the dead letter queue so if we get rid of this message we'll actually go back to send messages again we'll paste in our alaskan standard time and now our queue is one again and if we hit refresh now it disappears from the queue and it's not in the dead letter queue so if we go back to our service bus again and this time we look at time output now we can see active one message we go to service bus explorer again and we want to click on peak from start and here's the message we sent and here's the time zone in alaska right now as i'm running this so there we go nice and easy setting up powershell functions in azure without having to leave the ui hopefully you've enjoyed this video and if there's anything similar you want to see just let me know in the comments below or send me a message if you want. Thanks very much for watching.